Vortex. I wanted to show you what my hair looks like before I brush it. At one point, it was so bad. to pull into my garage coming from a different direction because somebody was blocking my normal pathway and so I entered my garage really awkwardly. First time that I worked at Steak and Shake, my, my first official round back when it was a 24-hour restaurant. I never brushed my hair. I mean, like I didn't want to, and it started to dread itself, and I had to I had to cut it off because it looked pretty bad. responsibility. It's kind of the responsibility of the artist is just to like be whatever the listener needs them to be at the time, you know? And I understand that. Like I was thinking about how everything's essentially the same thing. It's like a different version of the same thing. How, you know, there are a lot of people that would knock me for my appearance because, you know, obviously don't take very good care of my, my teeth. Um, it's not like to be cool or anything. I just, I don't know. I'm not the type of person that's like mindful about way that I look, you know, that's just never been like a major concern of mine. When I was younger, I think it was harder for me to accept the way that I looked. And I used to fantasize about being a completely different person. And so like, I really understand, you know, depersonalization and everything. I really understand. wanting to get out of your body and wanting to get out of your, I, I really understand wanting to get out of your brain way more than wanting to get out of your body, but I, I get that. It's, it's a form of like disassociation, you know, and it's easier to just go into that fantasy world than it is to just accept the way that you are. And I think for a while, like I was definitely stuck in that fantasy 
I'm holding the camera because we're going over bumps. In case you're wondering, why does she keep doing that? Good ass. Not that I don't like want to be healthy or anything. You know, like I, I think that there's a huge difference between like being healthy and like trying to impress people. I I don't need to like impress anyone. in order to be like a good person and I think that this obsession with approval and this obsession with appearance it's what's led us to this ugliness you know because it's not coming from a good place like people are going to the gym because they want to be healthy they're going to the gym because they want to be seen at the gym you know like a lot of these females that I know that wear boatloads of makeup and they don't need to do that because they're pretty but they don't think that see this album she really wants people to think she's fucking nuts She's mentally ill for sure. <laughs> Every artist is mentally ill, okay? I refuse to believe otherwise. Like, if you're a real artist and, and you can't do anything else, and she literally said that. She's like, this is all I can do. This is what I'm supposed to do with my life. I'm like, I can't do anything else. There's no other option. I'm like, yeah, I completely understand that. Because it's like, yeah, you know that you're not going to be, like, a normal person. And not that you look look down on people like that. It's not like I look at sheep with disdain. The only issue that I have with sheep is that they're controlling. You know? They, they want to tell non-sheep what to do. And then they want to act like, you know, they, they've, they've been so woke or... Uh, based or you know aware let's just say aware i feel like that that's that's what they mean like they're they've been so aware this whole time but they haven't if you're a sheep like you have not been aware this whole time because that's the whole nature of being a sheep is that you just go along with with what you think society wants from you okay Unfortunately, you know, being a weirdo, though it definitely has its perks, it's like people have these ideas of you. So it's like if you're not being spit on by society, you're being admired and you're being idealized by, by sick people, you know? It's like neither alternative is good, man. It's like... One of the reasons I go to church is like the best of the sheep, you know? It's like the people that I sing in the choir with have kids and, well, one of them doesn't, but mostly everyone I go to church with has a bunch of kids and they don't look down on me because I'm this weirdo schizo loner, you know? They don't think that I'm just like this pathetic woman <laughs> but I, I totally understand like why society would look at me like that because you know I'm not doing what's like normal for a woman to do it seems like now the normal thing for women to do is 
just just be miserable. And so anything that they have to show, they're gonna show it like all the time, you know? Like whether it's their body or their kids or like their husband, like they're running him around all the time and telling him what to do and stuff. It's like, I'm sorry if I do that in any kind of way about my smartphone. Uh, my, my, my lack of a smartphone rather. My, my smartphone non-dependency. It's just something that I, I stress because I want people to know that it's possible. It's possible to live your life without the stuff that they tell you is necessary, okay? You don't need it to survive, okay? It's very possible. Same with psych meds and same with society's approval. So it's like if you make stuff and it gives you a purpose, it gives you fulfillment, you know, like, I keep hearing this from so many people, like normal people, sheep, all right? They keep saying, yeah, we don't have community. There's no community in America. You're not looking for it. You can't find what you're not looking for, you stupid ass. <laughs> I mean, I found it. I found it in, in the Orthodox Church, but a lot of people don't want to do that, you know? And I understand if, if you're not religious, if that, that whole thing freaks you out or that's, it's just not your thing, that's fine. I don't know, go, go to the bowling alley or something. Do they, they still have bowling leagues? I'm sure they do. I'm sure that there, there are still people doing things like that. You just have to be motivated to find those people. And the problem is, like, if you're online all the time, you, you just think that everybody acts that way. And that's just not true. I can attest to the fact that not every liberal is fucking insane and wants to chop off the dicks of, of, of kids and, and, you know, like, they, they don't all go along with, with crazy horse shit, okay? Not all of them are, like, so sensitive that they can't have a conversation. I mean, I've had plenty of conversations with, with leftists. Um, And I mean, I, I mean, I've said this before, I've said this so many times that it's actually a lot harder to talk to somebody on the right in regards to this country because they're so brainwashed to think that this is the best place in the world. And um, a lot of people are leaving America. Even though like, you know, there, there are problems like everywhere you go. And I think that a lot of these people, while, you know, if, if you want to like find a good woman, it's probably not going to be here. And I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm speaking uh, for a lot. A lot of women here, they just uh, don't. They just they don't know what a woman is supposed to be, you know. And so that's why you you see moms that you think, okay, she's doing the right thing. She's she's having kids. She's raising the next generation. Oh wait, never mind. She's taking that kid to a drag show. Fuck that. <laughs> Maybe she shouldn't have had a kid, you know? So it's like, you can't win them all. Like, just because you cross off some of the boxes doesn't mean you're gonna cross off all the boxes. At least I can cross off the empathy box. At least I got that, all right? A lot of people, they don't know how to have empathy because they go on these social media sites to basically train them not to give a fuck about people and, and to just seek that that dopamine hit. And if they're feeling insecure that day, all they need to do is just start scrolling and they get that quick fix immediately. And they get another quick fix and 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 another quick fix. And it's like, why wouldn't you be a junkie? You know, like, if, if you have that option on you all the time, and then you have all this, all this encouragement from society to be a junkie, then it's like, yeah, this is exactly what one would expect if they pay attention to the 
way that society behaves. So I know this channel's redundant. If you're still here, congratulations. Drink a bottle of Jack Daniels for me, all right? Because I'm not doing it anymore. Um, but yeah. I just hate expectation. And I guess, like, I've always been aware of the fact that um, I've always been aware of the fact that I've been, like, inept, you know? Like, every time I've had a boyfriend, I'm like, I'm not gonna be what he wants me to be. Like, I can only play the girl for so long. <laughs> so, uh, Dude, this song, she sounds like Lady Gaga. You know that song by Lady Gaga, the, the Bad Romance song? That's what this reminds me of. Only it's like a thousand times better. She produced this album, too. So she wrote it, arranged it, engineered it, and produced it. So yeah, it's possible for women to do stuff, you know? It's just they, they have to have the mindset of a man, you know? That's how you get shit done. And I think that that's the issue with a lot of women in, you know, leadership positions, is that they're still women. And so in order to be, in, in order to be, um, in order to be taken seriously in your job, like you have to forsake your womanhood in order to get the job done. Um, so if, if you do that, then it like deprives the world of, you know, well, <laughs> I know this is very sexist, but it'll it'll deprive the the, the world of, of you know a job that will actually get done by an, an actual man, right? Okay, I don't want to hit this car. Are you sure you don't want to hit it? <laughs> I might want to hit this car. I might. possible for women to do what men do but yeah they they really have to be just some freak you know and like I totally attest to the fact that I am a freak of nature What, what's funny is that I think I think that people on the left subscribe to me because you know they hear my anti-capitalist rants and they just assume that I'm one of them and then they hear me rant about homosexuality and then they unsubscribe I can only imagine why they're subscribing and unsubscribing but um yeah I'm definitely not what people expect not that I'm just so fucking amazing. But. There's this, like, culty church up the street. The dude I was waving to? Okay. They literally have street banners. And they have people in these like orange jumpsuits with posters that are trying to lure people into going to their church and so they're they're holding up these posters 
trying to engage with people in the street and entice them to go to their church, all right? Which is fucking cool. And you can say that about my church, too. Yeah. Look, to non-religious people, all religions are cults. And if you really like your church, then you're probably going to think that every other church is a cult. Every other church gets it wrong. Look, honey, the orthodoxy is the only one that can say that, all right? Oh. No, but I understand. Like, I can, I can tell, like, what people are thinking. Like, I can hear the thoughts in their head when I observe them. <laughs> I've just been studying people forever. Like, I do that, like, when I, when I work at Steak and Shake, I go out and I wipe the tables down. And I just, like, pay attention to other people and I just try to imagine what their lives are like. So... It's always been something that, I guess it just keeps me from not ever being bored. So, that's good, I guess, right? I mean, boredom sucks. Alright, I'm gonna go to church. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye, Vortex.